Hey, what's going on guys? I'm at Thunder Valley. It's day one of the Run Good finale, season finale. It's a really good series. It's at my home casino, Thunder Valley. I'm excited. Um, lots of big prize pools to go after in this series over the next two weeks. Um, so stay tuned. my life um, I just got to the poker room and realized that I forgot my players card and all my cash so I have to figure something out and just like that I'm off to a great start let's rewind and figure out how this lack of brain functioning actually happened the night before was Thanksgiving I cooked up a feast I probably still had food coma from the day before and I just forgot everything including my money. By the way, I hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving. All right, my buddy Victor Paredes had some cash on him, so he lent me 2,000, so we're good. I don't have to go to the bank. All right, time to register. All right, we're on the first break. Uh, it was a good start. I haven't busted anyone, but I've been shipping up, so I'm at 67K. The big blind will be going to 500 in level four. And um, yeah. I'll start recording some hands now. Yeah. All right, let's break down a hand. I have Ace-5 from the low jack. I have 57K at 600 big blind. I raise it up to 1500, which is two and a half X. The big blind, both the blinds call, and we flop a flush draw. It's queen high. Now, a lot of times I'm gonna check back this flop, but the table was gonna break after this hand, and the big blind had already kind of showed some interest that he was done with this hand, so I decided to just stab at it. The small blind calls, we have a 10k pot. The king of diamond comes on the turn. I now have a Broadway draw as well. Um, I can't afford to get check raise off my hand here, so I check back and bink the river with a three of clubs. He checks to me, I bet 8k, I size it up because there are a lot of two pair, so there's a lot of king x. Um, and because I checked back the turn, I, I do look a little bit weak, so it's either a bluff or the nuts. He snap calls me, and we will never know what he had, but that was a good hand. This next hand is an interesting one. It's against a player who I've never seen before. I just got moved to the table, so I've only seen him play a few hands, and he seems like he's playing every hand. He also was the overall chip leader with over 200k in like level 4, which was crazy. I don't know how he got all those chips, so he must be doing something. But I also get the feeling, though, that he was getting a little bit out of line. So let's see how this hand goes. Anyways, he's going to defend his big blind against my low jack open to 1500. And I flop top pair, top kicker. There are two hearts on the board. Normally, I would size up here with my ace king because all king x hands are supposed to call me and I get value there. And I also want to protect against all the draws. I ended up making just a half size bet though because I wasn't quite sure yet with this particular player if I wanted to make the pot really big yet. It's a safe turn card now and now I really want to charge him a little bit if he did call me with a king or a 10. So I increased my sizing to about two thirds pot on the turn. I bet 5.5k and he calls again. At this point in my head I'm already thinking that I'm probably going to be checking back a lot of rivers. But when it pairs the board, runner, runner six, my hand is just too good to check back. So I have to bet it for value, which I do. I bet 13,000. And this is where it gets really weird because he check raises me to 30K, which isn't a really big check raise at all. It kind of looks like value when you just look at the sizing. But I just can't figure out what value hands would play this way because King 10 and pocket fives would probably check raise either on the flop or the turn to protect against all those draws and to get value from my kings. I unblocked the flush draw. Maybe he has a flush draw. And my original assumption about this guy was that he gets out of line. So I'm just not folding here. So I end up making the call here with ace king. And when he turns over his hand, I was pretty surprised that he played his hand this way. His hand has... Plenty of showdown value. If anything, he should be calling if he's not folding. 
but he decided to raise and turn it into a bluff and his sizing was just way too small and didn't make much sense. Not too long later, the same player busted in a very similar way. He had a flush and again, he turned his hand into a bluff and got caught by the nut flush. Second break, things are going pretty good. We're going to 1K big blind and I have about 110K, so 110 bigs and still my first bullet. <laughs> It's a soup dumpling. It's his first time. Did is it life changing? <laughs> he doesn't even like it. It looks like he hates it. Yes, and if it's the Lexi, you're safe. Right, you're safe. You're safe. safe. All right. Woo! All right, it's between you two. <laughs> between Victor and Jassy. Oh, okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's fine. Uh, we just did credit card roulette for dinner and we just left it with the bill because we have like two minutes to get back to the poker room and I got a pee. <laughs> All right, we're back from the dinner break. This hand is against a very good player, um, one of the guys that I had dinner with, Maxwell Young. He's a tournament crusher. He's in the cutoff and opens to 7K. I three bet to 22K off of a little bit over 100k starting stack here. The big blind is 3k. Um, this is probably the third or fourth time now that I have 3-bet max, and he knows it, but he's been opening um, a lot of hands more than anyone else at the table. So so he's going to make the call. He has me covered by a little bit, and we see a 9 high flop with two deuces, rainbow. Um, I think this is a pretty good flop for my range to continue with. Um, not only do I have all the over pairs, but also Ace Queen, Ace Jack are probably going to float here. So um, I'd be getting value off of those hands. I think the cutoffs open call range pre flop has a lot more eights and nines. Also, I'm thinking sixes, sevens, fives, and maybe tens are uh, possible hands. So normally I'm going to be checking Ace King here a lot because it has showdown value. But in this case, I really felt like. Um, with my stack size, I either have to put the pressure on now or on the river, and I think now is more credible if I want to get those hands to fold. So I go all in. My stack size is just a little bit less than pot size here, max pressure. He goes into the tank for quite a long time. He finally ends up folding, and he says he folded king nine. So I'm actually glad that I played it this way, even though I played it a little bit differently than I normally would. All right, we're on the last break of the night. We're about seven, seven away from the money and also bagging. I've got 100K. I just lost the minimum with pocket queens versus pocket kings. Um, I've been hovering between 100 and 130 all day. It's been a lot of small ball poker. So, um, yep, just got to try to finish this off. Five o'clock. Since the flashes have been missing now. This next hand comes very close to the bubble. I have pocket kings in the cutoff with 19 big blinds. The low jack is going to open to 10k at 4k big blind. At 20 bigs, pocket kings in this position, um, you're, we're going to be flatting a lot here and occasionally putting in a small raise. At 15 big blinds, it becomes a shove. So I'm kind of right there in the middle. I decided to go for the small raise because I want to build up the pot and it leaves me with a pot size bet on the flop. Now, of course, the ace comes in the window. That always happens when you have pocket kings, right? And it puts me in a really tough spot now um, because I only have 50k, the pot 60k. If I check back this, I feel like he's just going to exploit the crap out of me on the turn. And I'm not a huge fan of my play here, but I choose a very small sizing and see bet 15k. And he goes all in, so I just snap fold. This was a pretty tough spot on the flop. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Again, this hand happened very close to the bubble. In fact, the very next hand that was dealt, there was a double knockout on one of the ne nearby tables, and that's what actually popped the bubble. Yes! Let's go! Bagging five big blinds. Five big blinds. Let's go! Let's go. We should be playing like let's go. We should be playing two more levels. All right, guys. I just bagged a massive stack, five big blinds for day two. I correctly folded pocket kings on the bubble. I lost the minimum with pocket queens versus pocket kings shortly before the bubble. So I should have busted actually 
more than once. So we're free rolling with five big blinds. Let's fucking go. I think this is the first time in my entire tournament career that I bagged less than a starting stack. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm back at Thunder Valley for day two of the 1K 250K guarantee. The prize pool was over 400K. First place is 78,000. I'm towards the bottom of the 70 players returning, but the plan is to spin it up and hopefully get a big payout. Okay, Gotta make it look like a lot. Here we are on the very first hand of the day. I'm not wasting any time. I have an ace. I put in my five big blinds. It folds around all the way to the big blind. He he hesitates for a moment and then he calls off with king 10 and this is what happens. I flop the deuce and my hand holds and I get a double up. After a couple of orbits, I pick up a6 in the cutoff with my 37k. I put it in. Again, I get called by the big blind with king 10. And once again, my ace high is going to hold up this time. Neither of us paired up. And just like that, I'm up to 78k now. <laughs> Safe again. We're now down to 60 players. I've made a pay jump. It's a really small one. Uh, the, for the next level or so, I just steal the blinds a couple of times. I don't get called. And I'm barely staying in it. I'm just hanging in there, staying alive, chipping a chair, waiting for a big double up. I made it to the first break. I have 36K. Uh, we're going to 8K big blinds, so it's less than five big blinds, but we're still in it. And I uh, made two small pay jumps, which are very small, but when you enter the day at the bottom, every pay jump feels a little bit bigger. <laughs> Finally, I play a hand where I get some action. I wake up with king queen suited in the hijack. I go all in for 36k. It folds around all the way to the big blind again. The big blind calls with ace jack offsuit. I have two live cards, not a terrible spot at all. But unfortunately, the ace is right in the window and I do not improve. And that is GG for me. The pain. I missed a pay jump by one. I missed another pay jump by one. It feels so bad. All right, so there's a $400 satellite into the main event, which is, uh, which is a $2,500 buy-in. So that's what I'm gonna play next. Looks, looks like I'm not the only YouTuber at this table. Hi, What's up? I'm fishing. We got fishing, fishing poker. Check out her YouTube. She does in Mandarin, which is crazy, but you can do subtitles, I think. <laughs> uh, Ace King versus Kings versus Queens, and I'm probably GG. <laughs> I win. I have a six. Oh, man. Crazy. Big <laughs> That's it for this weekend. The next tournament I'm going to play is on Tuesday. It's a 255 buy in, a lower buy in, and it's going to be 100K guarantee. So, tons and tons of value there. And tomorrow's an off day. So, see you guys later.